Well, welcome back. A um, couple of things I wanted to do on this video. I want to update everyone about the new COVID symptom tracker app availability in the United States. And if we get time, I also want to talk briefly about India and Nepal, which are current areas of concern. Now, most of you are probably familiar with me showing you the COVID symptom tracker app from the UK. So this is live. So 6,478 total number of new cases across the UK today. And it gives you all sorts of useful information, COVID in your area, latest COVID news and research, which is where we got a lot of that pregnancy uh, information from on the previous video. So that's all very good and useful and we are familiar with it. But the good news is that there's now an American site version so this is very good news. Now let's, um, I'll just give you the links for this. I'm going to paste all these, of course, but that's the Apple link. That's the Android link. This is the website link, which I'm on now. Um, it's also available in Spanish, which is brilliant. And the lead uh, person here is uh, Dr. Andrew Chan, Massachusetts and uh, Harvard, who is a epidemiologist and physician. Now, Dr. Chan is well known for his previous epidemiological work on cancer. So it's good of him to take a bit of time out from that and focus on the COVID one as well. Now, let me just show you what the United States app is uh, is offering. So it's saying that there's, um, well, most of those are in the UK to be fair at the moment. I'll tell you what, let, view COVID in your state. Let's do that. So we can go to... Uh, particular here we are particular states so let's look at uh, hmm. there'll be a way to get it all in somehow you just got to fiddle with these things haven't you so is that is that where's that oh yeah that's california that's good so now california um only fifteen thousand people at the moment contributing to the app so that's number of contributors fifteen thousand three hundred thirteen Percentage of app users with symptomatic COVID-19, 0.25%. Need to get more numbers on that, but, you know, it's a, it's a start. Uh, Texas, 4,786 users, 0.69 symptomatic. Um, where else should we go? Uh, Montana. Oh, Montana. Come on, Montana. 203 users on the app, 0.49% symptomatic. Montana could try harder. Anyway, you get the idea. You can go around to various uh, various states. Ohio, 3,121 users, 0.38% symptomatic. And as well as that, you can get all the, um, all the up-to-date reports, the research papers, everything's all on there. Um, don't want to go to YouTube, do I? Anyway, um, so, so that's the app now. Um, download it from one of those links or just go onto the Play Store on your mobile phone and just, just search COVID Symptom Tracker App UK and um, US rather and I'm sure you'll find it. Now, um, I'm going to play you a clip from uh, Dr. Andrew Chan who's going to tell us a little more about it. Now, this video from Dr. Chan has been on YouTube. I think it's been on for a while now, certainly days if not a week or two. And it's had like a hundred and something views. So what is going on? So let's watch it now as he explains more about this app. And it's just so important that we get this data. I mean, several times on, the, on this channel, we've looked at apparent inconsistencies between the data in the US and the data in the UK. And I don't accept it. It's the same disease. It's to do with the way that the data is collected. So we've got 4 million people in the UK and Sweden and a couple other countries contributing. You know, we, we need a lot, lot more people from the United States. And we saw that the number in the States is still relatively low. So let, let's have a look at this video now from... Across Dr. the nation, Daniel. the coronavirus pandemic is impacting every part of daily life, overloading our healthcare facilities and putting extraordinary stress on the supply of critical medical equipment. One of the most challenging aspects of this virus is a huge variation in symptoms which is making it hard to track the true spread of the disease. That is why we need to gather symptoms from as many people as possible from across the country. To do that, I teamed up with collaborators in the US and the United Kingdom to bring the COVID Symptom Tracker app to the United States. 
The app asks contributors to answer a few simple questions about themselves and their current health, and then asks them to check in daily to indicate whether they're feeling fine or if they've noticed any new symptoms. In response to recommendations from Stand Up to Cancer, the app also asks questions specifically for cancer patients and survivors so we can assess how to best support this high-risk community. This invaluable data is being analyzed on a daily basis and can help us pinpoint new hotspots, uncover which symptoms predict the onset of COVID-19, and understand why some people become severely ill while others do not. And by tracking the exposure of healthcare workers to patients, as well as our access to personal protective equipment, we can better understand how to safeguard those on the front lines of the pandemic. You can take part in this critical effort by downloading the COVID Symptom Tracker app and sharing symptoms daily, even if you're feeling well. It's available on iOS from the App Store or on Android from the Google Play Store. As more Americans participate and share their symptoms, the valuable information from the COVID Symptom Tracker app is helping us better combat COVID-19. Please take a moment to download the app today and use it daily to help protect yourselves, your loved ones, and your community. Across the nation, the coronavirus pandemic oh, is... Once is enough. Right. So th there we go. Um, so, you know, it's like, it's like Tim Spector in this country, um, very reputable scientist leading that up. You just report in, you give information every day. It takes about 30 seconds. And it, it can just be transformational. That's just the way that we just need this data. So th there you go in the United States. And I'll be checking back in a, a week or so's time, uh, hoping that the number of... Uh, individual contributors in states has gone up quite dramatically right now i'm just going to finish on um nepal uh which has been a concern actually i haven't mentioned it for a while but um now this is the per capita data because india of course has got a much bigger population than nepal so we see india is increasing but nepal doesn't appear to be so bad um but of course the testing in India is really progressing remarkably well, whereas the testing in Nepal is is minimal. So, um, uh, 28 million people. It's, it's one of these fairly corrupt countries. It's ranked 113th of the most corrupt countries out of 180 in the world, and it's only getting 34 out of 100. So th this one, the higher, the better. This one, the lower, the better in terms of corrupt countries. Now, I'm not pick, picking on Nepal particularly. There's many countries around the world which are remarkably corrupt. And basically, basically to me, what corruption means is that the money uh, in the country stays with the corrupt elite and doesn't trickle down to the people. That's my simple definition of corruption. So if you want to know where you stand, I've given you the link there for transparency. Uh, the Transparency Organisation, which does a lot of good work. Now, if you want to know the least corrupt... Cor OK, what is the least corrupt country in the world? Do you want to have a guess? The least corrupt country in the world. And what's the most corrupt country in the world? Do you want to guess that one as well? Well, the least corrupt country in the world, according to this ranking, is Denmark, who scores 87, similar to New Zealand, then Finland, then Singapore, Sweden, Switzerland. So these are the world's least corrupt countries. Now, of course, the question that comes to my mind is, well, where's the United Kingdom? Where's the United States? Well, this data tells us not in the top six. And that's what it tells us. Most corrupt, Venezuela, Yemen, Syria, South Sudan, Somalia. And of course, lots of countries in between. And these corrupt countries are greatly, um, well, they're certainly not helping the pandemic because you know the, the money is all restricted to, to richer people, which is the problem. So Nepal's in that category. But as I say, not picking it out. It's not in the worst five or six there, but um, it's ranked 113. Now, um, newsletters from Nepal. Uh, this is from the... Uh, Missionary organization in Nepal, which gives actually pretty good, really pretty good reports. I have known individuals from this group, and they are of a high caliber. Uh, I've done some teaching in Nepal, so I'm vaguely familiar with it. Um, 
August has been the worst month for cases and deaths so far. Cases plus a thousand, but the testing is is, is ten thousand, which is, you know, for a population of twenty eight million, it's, it's nothing, is it? Um, so the real number of cases, I would expect. Uh, per capita cases to be at least uh, where India is, if not higher. So this is not good data we're getting from Nepal. Um, Kathmandu is the worst hit areas. Several local lockdowns and curfews have been brought back. But as we saw earlier this year, this is from local people, um, work and food just doesn't get through to the poorer people because of the uh, inequality in wealth. So just another example of, of an Asian country there where, um, again, the poorer people are suffering uh, disproportionately. And lockdown means that some people can't eat that day. It, it, it's that serious. Anyway, so if you're in the United States, please download that COVID symptom tracker app. Um, we've seen time and time again on this channel how useful it is. And uh, we'll, we'll look back in a week or so and see if the... Uh, the number of uh, uptakes uh, from the states has uh, has increased okay thank you for watching this video as always